Welcome to this video on using recursion in Scheme. This video is based on materials created by Professor Mark Kavatsa of the University of Greenwich and it's presented by me, Andy Wicks. So let's get started. The first thing we need to look at is what is recursion? Well, recursion seems a rather odd concept at first. It's when a function calls itself. And this creates a loop, because if you had something like defining a function called x, it does something, and then it calls itself again, it'll keep going round and round that loop. So there's a bit of a problem. It must go on forever. Well, the first thing's first, this is a loop. In functional programming, this is the only kind of loop you have. There are no others. There are no for loops, there are no while loops. Next, left like this, it would be an endless loop. And it would just go round and round forever, doing whatever it is you're asking the program to do. And each time round, your program will use up more and more memory until it crashes. The trick is to find a condition which stops this loop. So, let's start off with some basic terminology. The do something is called the recursion step. The condition or conditions that stop the loop is called the base case. The recursion step must do something that allows you to get to the base case. So there's got to be some way that your program will let you get to a condition that says, OK, this is where I stop. Because if you don't, you're back to an endless loop. Now, for this example, I'm going to use the newton raphson method for calculating a square root. This sounds terribly mathematical. First of all, you don't need to worry about it. It's not particularly clever. But even if you were worried, it wouldn't matter because we're not interested in the sums bit of what's going on. We're interested in how to program it. But I'm going to show you what it does first. So to demonstrate the use of recursion, we're going to use an equation called the newton raphson method to find a square root. 2 is the square root of 4. 3 is the square root of 9. And 11 is the square root of 121. If you multiply 11 by 11, you get 121. The newton raphson method is a way of finding the square root of a number. And it works for all numbers, not just those with nice square roots. So, we have to have a plan. With functional programming, no plan means you're going round in that endless loop. So we'll do this in three stages. First of all, we're going to create and test the recursion step. Second, we're going to create and test the base case. And then finally, we're going to adapt the second step to include the first one with a lambda function. Now, this may sound complicated but it's not when you see the example. It's really just a matter of following set rules. So the equation, let's start at the beginning. The equation for newton raphson is this equation, and you're probably wondering what it's all about. What it is, is n is the number that we want to find the square root of, and g is our first guess. All this does is find the average of the guesses at each particular stage. So let me show you what's going on. Supposing we want to find the square root of 2, and we start with a guess of 1.5, say. We could start with anything, but here I'm going to start with 1.5. What we'd have is this equation. We'd have our guess of 1.5, we feed that into the equation, and that gives us a set of results which we can work slowly down to give us an answer of 1.416666, whatever, 7. We can then use that answer, that 1.466667, in the, as the next guess. Now here, I've shortened it to 1.417 because I haven't got enough space. I'm cheating intelligently. But you and I know that that last 7 is a load of 6s with a 7 at the end. So all I'm doing is using exactly the same equation, but I'm taking what came out of the first time round and feeding it into the second time round. 
and that then gives me an answer of 1.4142. And we can keep doing this until we get the answer as accurate as we want it. What goes in at one end produces a result, and that gets fed in again at the next time round. So let's have a look at creating this equation that was on the previous slide in Scheme. As always, we do it slowly. So first of all, I'm going to define a function called rec step, the recursion step, and that's going to take in two numbers. The number that we want to find the square root of, and g is our guess. And the first thing I'm going to do is the first part of the equation, I'm going to divide the number by the guess. I'm not going to try and do the whole equation in one step. That way lies madness. We do it a little bit at a time. Then we can add g to what we get. So here we've got the plus and the g. And finally, we can divide by 2. So I've created a function that now mimics that recursion step that I wanted for my function. In other words, I'm going to define rec step as being ng with this as the recursive bit. This is the bit that we're going to repeat later on. But before we do that, we want to test whether this gives the correct answer. We always test as we go. In functional programming, it's easy to make mistakes. So we're going to make sure that we do things slowly. Always test as you go along. Slowly is the same as quickly. Quickly is the same as slowly. If we run rec step with n equals 2 and a guess of 1.5, well, if we run that once, what we'd expect to get is that 1.416667 that we got in the example above. Then we could feed that into the same thing again. So we could do the rec step of 2 with the rec step of 2 and 1.5. In other words, we take the output from the first time and feed it in as the guess the second time round. And we know that for that, we should get 1.4142. The more we nest, the more accuracy we get. But if we keep nesting, it gets more and more complicated. This is a good reason for having recursion. If you find yourself nesting, the same functions again and again. And what you really need is recursion. Now, the recursion. First of all, we're going to define a function called n hyphen r, Newton Raphson. And that's going to take in a number and a guess. Now, what we want is to be able to get out. And we'll get out when we find that the absolute of the number minus the square of the guess is less than 0 0.0 1. What we're saying is, that when we get to a number that's so close to the square root that we're only 0.001 out, then we're close enough. Now, obviously, we could add in as many zeros as we like, but as you can see, I've run out of space. Now, we do the rec step with num and guess. If the answer we get is less than 0.001, then we just output the number that we get when we feed our number and guess into rec step. Alternatively, if it isn't less than 0.001, then there must be a bigger error than we want. So we want to do nr again. In other words, we're going to send ourselves back to the beginning of nr to do the same work again. But this time round, we're feeding in rec step num guess as the answer that we're looking for. So in this way, we can keep going round and round until we get an answer that's within two decimal places of being right. Well, that's the plan, but does it work? Well, let's test it by using 2 as the number and 1.5 as the guess. But we'll add something called a trace as well, because traces are really useful. So let's get into scheme. So here we are with the rec step that we originally had. And we want to make sure that this works. So if I run it, what I get is 1.416666, and Scheme seems to be rounding down rather than rounding up, so it's got a 5 at the end. But it's so far back, it doesn't matter. So our original recursion step seems to work. We can therefore replace this function with another more useful one. So here we're doing that putting the recursion step inside the recursion step. And this should get us a better answer than the one we had before. 
Well, if we run this, we're now getting down to 1.4142 and the little bits. So this seems to be working. We've got that recursion step the way we want it, but we can make this a little more interesting still by adding in that part that does the base case. Now here we have the rec step that we've just tested. We know that that works. And now what we're doing is defining the function nr, the newton raphson method, and that accepts two parameters, number and guess. And what we're saying is that if the error in our guess is smaller than 0.001, well, then we're happy. If it isn't less than 0.001, then we're going to do the recursion bit again. We're going to call the newton raphson method again. And we're going to keep doing that with the rec step until we get an answer. And to show you this working, we're going to put trace on. Trace is quite useful. The require racket trace imports the module trace into racket. We can then set trace to trace what's happening with a particular function. So in this case, we want to trace what's happening with the function n hyphen r. Then we can run it. And when we run it, we'll see how the function is handling itself. So if I run this, you can see that we've got nr with 2 and 1.5, which was our original guess. We've then got 2 and 1.41666 and so on. And then we've got 2 and 1.4142 bits. And then it chunters it through again just to make sure. And what we've got is a fairly good approximation to the square root of 2. Now, this is working the way we want it to work. And we're happy. But, and there's always a but, let me show you what the problem is. The problem is that we've got two functions, and that might cause confusion or errors. If we've got a program with lots of bits and pieces in, how do we know which bits go together? So what we need to do is to think about this a little more. We can make it so that we're only interested in when the accuracy is less than say 0.001, and we can delete then that true condition. That leaves us with the line that calls nr again, and that is going to be the clever bit. Let me show you what I mean. What we do is we replace the word rec step in the function nr with exactly this, and that's what we do each time. We find the recursion step and replace that with the start of a lambda function. Now those central brackets, they're the ones that take the parameters. So the first thing we have to do is to get the parameters from the old rec step function. So what we get is open bracket lambda with n and g as the parameters. Then we can copy and paste the recursion step directly in just before the final bracket. So what we get is this. Now that's just a copy and paste job. There's nothing clever going on here. But by doing it like this, we can use just the one function rather than have two. The lambda functions come into their own. So now we can go back to Dr. Racket and see whether this works. We can test it again. Here we have the same function that we had before for calculating newton raphs But now we've only got the one function which contains that lambda expression, the one that does all the work. And we can make this as accurate as we want by setting the level of accuracy that we want to as many decimal places as we need. But does this work? Well, let's try it. And with the trace on, you can see that we got the same answer as we did before. But now we've done it with only one function. So if we're looking to see where something is happening, we've only got one function to go to to find the answer.